bigger question, I think, is the replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, now, I was thinking the other day about what the October surprise would be for this election, whether it's um, some vaccine that Trump rolls out or a clash with the Chinese Navy in the South China Sea. Um, and as I was thinking of what it might be, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, and I realized this is the October surprise. Um, this, um, perhaps more than anything, her passing um, is a lightning rod for the culture wars. It makes, it reinforces the idea that this is a visceral culture war election. I think that in the next few days, President Trump will nominate, possibly as early as today, um, and nominate a replacement. My guess is it'll be either Amy Coney Barrett um, or Barbara Lagoa, both of whom are very conservative justices on the federal appeals courts, both of whom would make it very clear that they are in support of, of overturning Roe v. Wade. Um, so we would be getting down to the, the most motivating issue there for conservative evangelical and Catholic right um, which is ending uh, ending a federal abortion right. Um, and um, we would be breaking all precedent by having um, this pushed through in the six weeks before the election. If, if Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, wanted to confirm um, a Trump nominee to the Supreme Court, but before the election, he could. Um, assuming he had his, his party with him. Um, so it might well boil down to, you know, can you peel away four, well, it would boil down to, can you peel away four Republican senators um, to uh, uphold the rules of the game and say, look, um, you know, this isn't fair. We should wait until the American people have spoken and decided who their new president is. If it is Trump, then we can confirm her most likely after um, polling day in the lame duck session. If it isn't Trump, then we should wait until January the 20th. That, that is something I expect Mitt Romney will say. And I think Susan Collins of Maine has said that. Um, Lisa Murkowski, you need one more. Um, and we don't know whether that will happen. The pressure on Republicans to vote for the nominee is going to be acute. The Liberal backlash, should it happen, will I think be equally acute. There will then be, it will then be extremely hard for Biden to resist the factions that are arguing. In that case, the moment we get in power, we should expand the size of the Supreme Court mm. from nine to 13, and we will just nominate and confirm four liberal justices within the first week. And I, I think it would be it would be, I hate to use a cliche, but it would be a Rubicon. America would be crossing at that point. Um, there's nothing in the Constitution that says how large the Supreme Court should be. It doesn't have to be nine. It's been as small as five um, over American history. It's been as large as 10. The only time that a president tried to change this was Franklin Roosevelt in 1937, known notoriously as the court packing uh, incident where he tried to pack the court because the court kept striking down aspects of the New Deal. Um, and he tried to pack the court and it, and it blew up in his face. I think in these circumstances, if Trump and McConnell managed to confirm somebody like Amy Coney Barrett, um, it would be pretty hard for Biden to resist those forces saying, we've just got to expand the size of the court. It's in our power. This is about power. We are students at the feet of Republicans. They know how power, how power works. We need to learn from them.